Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up or restore your Ledger Nano S. So let's get going. Hey guys, Crypto Dad here. I encourage you to watch my entire video from beginning to end for all of the lively discussions about cryptocurrency and related topics. However, if you're just here for some quick how-tos, I've created a guide here with some of the time marks on the video to jump to your area of interest. Once again, thanks for watching. Crypto Dad out. Okay, so I've done quite a few videos about the Ledger Nano S and how you store cryptocurrency in it. And I believe it's one of the best long-term storage solutions and secure storage solutions for your cryptocurrencies. It's cold storage, which means that uh, the private keys are stored on the device and uh, they're inaccessible uh, by anyone except yourself, uh, you know, when you're online. Uh, one of the features of the Ledger Nano S is that whenever you try to send out any cryptocurrency uh, using the, uh, the, your wallet app, uh, which of course runs in your browser or on your computer, it will not send out the transaction unless you have confirmed by pressing the buttons on the ledger. And that is the hardware failsafe. Uh, that prevents someone from trying to steal your cryptocurrency. A lot of people worry, oh, when I'm online, you know, there's hackers out there, they're hiding in all the little uh, ones and zeros of my computer, they're gonna steal my cryptocurrency. And they can't because the Ledger Nano S protects them. Uh, it's a hardware solution. So, uh, it's a great solution. Now the problem is, uh, a lot of people ask me this, and uh, this is why I'm doing the video, the problem is uh, that it is a one device and it, it, and it could fail, it could get lost, it could get misplaced, uh, you could misconfigure it in some way. Uh, and so people ask me, gee, what happens if uh, you know this thing fails? Then what? Uh, well, today I'm gonna address that. And uh, let's get going. Uh, but before I get too far into it, I'll say that you're going to create, when you set up your Ledger Nano S, a 24-word uh, recovery phrase. And this is the key to restoring that Ledger Nano S. And uh, so, uh, but without further ado, I'm gonna get going on the unboxing. So you can sort of see how the Ledger Nano gets set up. And, but the first thing I'm gonna do is restore from a backup seed. I already have one Ledger Nano S with a lot of cryptocurrency on it. So the first thing I'll do is I'll set it up as a uh, recovery device so uh, you can see what happens and we we talked let's say uh, you know you have a ledger nano s you're worried uh, you can keep a backup just in case something like this happens or if you know you screw everything up you can reset the original as well and restore it from backup so anyway without further ado i have my little trusty uh b-roll camera set up and uh, let's switch over to that puppy. Okay, here's our Ledger Nano S, and we're gonna open this guy up first. Okay, so this is the Ledger Nano S. This is what it looks like when you first open it up. It's uh, basically a USB flash drive uh, at its heart, but it's much more than that. Okay, and uh, you'll get this little welcome kit here. And here uh, is the cable. And you get a little few uh, attachments here, a key ring, uh, you know, various ways to uh, carry around your Ledger Nano. All right, and this is the welcome pack. Christ. Well, that wasn't very graceful. 
All right, so uh, here's our little welcome. A cryptographic mechanism checks the integrity of your Ledger device internal software each time it is powered on. The secure element chip prevents any interception or physical replacement attempt. Ledger devices are engineered to be tamper-proof. It's a beautiful little device, all right? Uh, let's see. This guy uh, tells me to go to their website to get started. Follow the instructions to configure. But here is our important item. Okay, this is the recovery sheet. And as you can see here, it uh, gives you uh, space to write down 24 words. Now, when you first uh, set up the, the Ledger Nano the very first time, you're going to want to go through the process of uh, filling out this recovery sheet. This is very important. And once you've done that, you will always be able to restore the Ledger Nano S to its uh, original pristine condition. All right. But today we're going to do something different. We're going to restore from a recovery phrase that we have from a different Ledger Nano S. So let's get started on that. Okay. So when we first plug the Nano S into our computer, uh, it powers up and presents us with the welcome screen. And uh, there's some instructions on there on the interface. Uh, you've got those two buttons on the top. You press both buttons to make your selection. And then it uh, gives you a little guidance there. OK, and uh, after you've read the instructions, you can uh, get going by pressing both buttons. And the first option uh, is uh, whether you want to configure it as a new device. So that's the first question that it asks you. Uh, in our case, what we want to do is restore. So I'm going to hit the X there. And then we get to the option that, uh, yes, we would like to restore a configuration. So choosing that option, the first thing it wants you to do is set up a pin code. You do not have to set up the same pin code that you did on the original device. Uh, the two pin codes can be different. Uh, they can be the same if uh, that helps. So here we just choose numbers as uh, we can go up and down uh, using the two different buttons. One button will take us higher and the other button will take us lower. And when we're satisfied with the number, uh, we just hit both buttons uh, to confirm that. And uh, we just move along that way and enter in a pin code. And I'm entering numbers in here. And as you'll notice, as I get to uh, four, you're going to see a check mark over to the side. And what that means is that uh, it is possible to just choose a four digit pin code. You don't have to enter any more numbers after that if you don't want to. Although uh, you'll also notice that you can continue to enter numbers after you've seen that check mark. And uh, any length after four is acceptable. So you could enter a, a five, six, seven, or eight character pin code. It's entirely up to you uh, how high you want this, uh, how many numbers you want in your pin code. And then you'll also notice that there's a little icon there for backspace. If uh, you want to go ahead and backspace, if you're not happy with your number, uh, you can backspace and uh, just uh, redo the numbers uh, if you're not satisfied. Okay, and then we get to the point where it asks us to enter our recovery phrase. And uh, this may seem like a daunting task uh, because there are 24 words and there's no keypad on this guy. But uh, the Ledger Nano has a little uh, built-in system that uh, kind of makes it easy. So the first thing that we want to do is just hit both buttons. Uh, so we get into the entry mode so that we can enter. Now you'll notice here uh, that it comes with a card and uh, there's 24 words on the card. So uh, you're gonna wanna write all these down the first time you set it up. It's going to present them to you. Uh, in this case, what we're doing is restoring from a different one. So uh, as you Notice here, there are options for the number of words for the recovery phrase. Um, the Ledger Nano that I originally set up uh, came with 24 word recovery phrase, so that's the one I'm gonna use. Maybe some of the older ones came with uh, less. 
but in this case we're going to choose 24. And uh, then it asks us to enter the first word. And as you can see, there's an interface for the alphabet. You just go up and down. And you'll also notice that uh, as you're entering words, it presents you with less choices. So in other words, as soon as we enter a vowel, or I'm sorry, as soon as we enter uh, a consonant, uh, it just presents us with vowels after that. So uh, there are a number of words in there that uh, it uses uh, when it generates these seed phrases. It doesn't, uh, you know, give you the possibility of every single word in the English language. So you'll notice that as we start to complete a word, um, it narrows down the choices pretty quickly for us based on uh, the letter that we're entering. So if you'll notice here, I think I'm about to enter the letter Y. And as I do so, it presents us with a completed word because there aren't that many Y words in its repertoire. So it gives us the choice of a couple of words here that begin with Y. And uh, you simply choose the word. And then you can, after you've chosen that word, you can just move on. Uh, you also have the option of clearing the word at the end. Also note that uh, once you've entered, say, word number one and moved on to word number two, you can't go back. So you want to kind of be careful as you're entering your words to make sure that they are the exact same words in your recovery phrase. And uh, But the Ledger Nano makes it quite easy once you've entered the words and started typing that, you know, it offers you the option uh, for a completed word. So it doesn't force you to uh, type in every single letter of every single word. Makes life a little easier for you. And as you can see here, we're completing up word number three. And uh, once that's uh, entered, we'll do word number four. Okay, so now you can see uh, that it says the device is ready. So let's hit both buttons and see what happens, baby. All right, look at that. Okay, so it seems like, let's just double check this. Okay, it looks like it has the default uh, cryptos on there. Okay, but not to panic. If I have some Ripple on there, all I need to do is install support for the Ripple app and I should be able to access uh, whatever Ripple I have stored on this thing. So, but let's check our Bitcoin first, okay? I'm gonna go into the Bitcoin. Uh, you hit both buttons and now it's set up to access the Bitcoin wallet. Now, if you've never set up a Ledger Nano before, let's switch over here. If you've never set up a Ledger Nano before, uh, there are apps that need to be installed. And uh, you can go over here to the Ledger Nano homepage and uh, go over here to apps. All right, and down here are uh, all the apps that you need to install in order to access uh, the private keys, uh, the cryptocurrency wallets that you uh, have on the Ledger Nano S, okay? Uh, let me just, I know I, I talk a little too much sometimes, but uh, let's just take Bitcoin as our example. Okay, uh, yeah, we want to think about it as the Bitcoins are on this device, and indeed they are in many ways, okay? But the Bitcoin uh, blockchain works as a distributed ledger. So uh, the entire Bitcoin blockchain can either be downloaded to your computer and you can run as a node, a full node, uh, or you can use uh, a light wallet which sort of connects to the internet and accesses the blockchain. Uh, the Electrum Bitcoin wallet uh, has sort of a middle ground. You install the Electrum Bitcoin wallet on your computer and uh, it sort of uh, has, it, it, it checks servers out there that are running uh, that have the full nodes on them. So, and then it gets that information <clears throat> accesses that information through those servers. Now, uh, the Ledger Nano S uh, stores the private keys of a Bitcoin address. It doesn't, it doesn't actually store the Bitcoin itself. 
the Bitcoin itself, if there is such a word, because uh, this is all uh, cryptography, this is all math, uh, but but the the Bitcoin blockchain ledger stores uh, Bitcoin addresses and Bitcoin transactions and Bitcoin balances. Okay, so that's all out there on the internet. Uh, the blockchain uh, exists um, out there and each node checks the current state of the blockchain to make sure that it's completely up to date and new blocks are getting added every day by miners and uh, new transactions are being added in blocks so your Bitcoin address exists on the blockchain now uh, each Bitcoin address consists of a public private key this is asymmetric cryptography okay so the private key is what gives you access and the public key is what allows other people to send you Bitcoin or uh, see your address it allows you to see your address but the private key is the part that uh, allows access so you need the private key in order to uh, send out Bitcoin okay and that's the part that is stored in the ledger nano s that private key now that private key basically just unlocks a bitcoin address which exists on the blockchain so your coins are held securely out there on the blockchain once you get a bitcoin address it can never be destroyed okay the only way to destroy a bitcoin is to uh for some person to go through and delete every single copy of the blockchain in the world on every single computer and every single smartphone which is almost an impossible task now you could lose access to your uh, blockchain address that's possible if you forget your password you lose your seed you know but as long as you are very careful as long as you keep your seed backed up your recovery phrase there is no way that you're ever going to lose access to your Bitcoin come heck or high water okay so all we're doing when we restore this <clears throat> ledger is uh, restoring a pointer that points to your uh, cryptocurrency on the blockchain so let's start with our Bitcoin and see if we can access it okay so I already have the uh, ledger wallet downloaded you can see it's over here in my apps all right, so let's just launch this guy. And I've probably talked so long I'm going to re need to re-enter the pin. We'll see. No. Uh, we'll choose legacy. It takes it a minute to synchronize. We'll see what happens. And lo and behold, look at that. I've never been so happy to see an empty wallet in my life. I emptied out this wallet, uh, but uh, the records still remain, right? This is still a valid Bitcoin address. I could send more Bitcoin in here if I wanted to. But look at that. I've got all of the uh, Bitcoin transactions that took place in this wallet and uh, they're all right here on this new ledger that uh, is not even my original my original actually is still working just fine but now I have a mirror image of it here okay so let's do one more thing let's go ahead and install ripple on this guy so we can see if my ripple is still safe as you notice when I showed you before there is no ripple wall there's no ripple support on this ledger so let's do that all right, we're going to close this guy out. We're going to go back over here to apps. We're going to go to the ledger manager. All right, I think it's, uh, I need to exit out. So uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to exit out of Bitcoin. All right, we go down here to quit app. And I go to the, the home screen, All right? And as soon as I go to home screen, the ledger nano, uh, manager is able to uh, launch and connect to this now that I've got this ledger nano manager open I can uh, go down here and add support for the different cryptocurrencies I'm going to do ripple because I got some ripple on here 
I'm going to hit the down arrow to download the ripple on here. And it's going to ask me to confirm this transaction. You know, are you, uh, do you want to, which is it, this finger? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so uh, then uh, it confirms. And this is just another beauty of the Ledger Nano S, okay? We have a software component on with the app, and we have a hardware component with the device. So uh, nobody can remotely access this guy because of the button confirmations, okay? So let's check here. Let's take a look at this guy and see if we got Ripple on here, All right? Lo and behold, there it is. We got Ripple. Okay, so now I'm going to hit both buttons again. Go into the Ripple. Uh, now I'm going to see. I'm going to exit this uh, Ledger Nano Manager, and I'm going to going to run the Ripple app, which I already have installed on my computer. It's over here. That is uh, also available on the Ledger Nano app page. All right, and let's see what happens when the Ripple wallet opens. Oh, look, there it is. Hey, check it out, man. I had 1,500 Ripple installed, and uh, let's say I lost my original Nano. All I had to do was uh, open up my little backup, restore from that recovery phrase, and lo and behold, I have full access to all of my crypto. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to access some altcoin. All right, we're going to go. Uh, I think I, I quit the Ledger Nano uh, Ripple app. I'm going to go back here to Ledger Manager. All right, it wants me to uh, exit out of the uh, crypto app, or I guess you would call the Ripple app. Now that I'm at the home screen, I can go back and this guy's going to open up for me. And I'm going to install Litecoin support on here. Down here, here's Litecoin. I'm going to hit the down arrow. All right, and once again, it's going to want me to, oh. Yeah, uh, it doesn't always ask you to confirm once you've unlocked it. And there you go. Now I've got some Litecoin support on, support on here. I'm going to you know, I show you that I've got the other apps on here. I'm going to go into my Litecoin. Pardon me. There it is. We're going to go into the Litecoin. Um, and we'll exit the manager again. And this time we're going to open the Ledger Wallet Bitcoin. Okay. The Ledger Wallet Bitcoin app is the one that handles Bitcoin and all the other alt uh, coins. Except, of course, for Ethereum, you can see they have the, uh, the there's there's a separate Ethereum and a separate Ripple. But uh, for all the other altcoins, you'll go straight into your Ledger Nano uh, Bitcoin wallet. So I'm going to hit Legacy here. It's going to synchronize, and uh, you'll you remember because I chose Litecoin on here. Now it shows me my Litecoin. Okay, isn't that awesome? I mean, that is just truly amazing how cryptography works. The private key on the ledger, when you set it up, generates a passphrase. And that passphrase is uh, derived from that private key. So, in other words, it doesn't like send out this, I don't know how long the key is, I'll have to find out. Uh, I should know these things. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it in the top there. I don't know what it is, you know, uh, you know, 2048 long uh, private key, which is, uh, you know, usually a binary a number. OK, really, really long. OK, a human being doesn't want to enter 2048 characters or, or 4000 or however many characters long the private key is. So cryptography does this wonderful thing where it runs a mathematical transformation on that private key, that, that huge long uh, binary number, and it generates out that 24 phrase, 24 word phrase, which uh, a human, uh, you know, an old uh, crypto daddy guy like me 
can wrap his head around, okay? I can enter a 24-word phrase. I'm sure as heck not going to sit down and try to enter a 2,000-long uh, binary uh, private key. It's just, uh, you know. So the way cryptography works is it runs that mathematical transformation, and you've got this 24-word phrase, which you can use to restore your Ledger Nano S. Okay? Uh, before I go, we'll do one more thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to access my ETH. I'm going to make sure that my ETH is still there. So that's pretty straightforward because the ETH was on there uh, as a default. Uh, we need to get out of... Okay, there we go. We need to get out of Litecoin. And we're just going to go over here to Ethereum. All right, and then we'll... Uh, We'll launch the Ethereum uh, Chrome app. You'll notice that these three are running in Chrome. They are Chrome apps. And that the Ripple one was uh, actually a Windows app. I'm not sure why, you know, what uh, design decisions were made. But uh, most of these are, are Chrome apps. And then the Ripple one is a separate Windows app. So let's see if my Ethereum is safe. Hmm, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so this this brand new ledger has been fully restored to access all of the cryptocurrency uh, that was stored on it. All the different, uh, I mean, there were several different wallets on here, and that one recovery phrase gave me access back to it. So there you have it, guys. That is the failsafe. Okay, you can always have a backup Ledger Nano S that can be restored from that recovery phrase. The important thing to remember is that this recovery phrase is your key to uh, gaining access to your cryptocurrency. If you lose your Nano, if the Nano fails, if uh, it's stolen, lost, uh, you know, uh, submerged in water when you go swimming, whatever the case may be, uh, do not fret. As long as you keep this in a safe place, most, <laughs> most likely separate from your Nano, you don't want to just leave it in the box because anybody that happens to uh, find the Nano in the box with the recovery phrase in there is going to have full access to the device. And it's as simple as that. Uh, you want to keep it in a separate place. You can keep it in a... a safe deposit box you could actually copy it down make copies of it put a copy at, at your home uh, put a copy in the safety deposit box you can tear it in half keep give one copy to your you know your loved one and uh, so that only you two together uh, can restore the nano uh, there the, the the possibilities are endless okay but as long as you get are able to gain access back to your 24 word recovery phrase, you'll be able to access your Ledger Nano S and all of the crypto that you've stored on it and uh, the current state, okay? Even though we, we create the recovery phrase uh, in the beginning where the Ledger Nano is empty, you'll notice when I restored, it had access to all of the cryptocurrency that I had on there, all of the transaction history, uh, and everything that was related to my original Nano. So uh, we can all sleep easy at night knowing that our crypto is safe on the Ledger Nano S. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, the video was pretty long. I'm going to go back and edit and try to make it nice for you guys. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. If... Uh, you would like to subscribe to my channel, I would be eternally grateful to you. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, it, it, I just love to see my channel grow and I love to see subscribers. So, uh, you know, come and join the party, guys. Uh, once again, thanks for joining me and I'll see you again next time.